All right, for this video, I want to go through a sample schedule SE for self-employment taxes. And in this example, we're going to have John Q. Taxpayer, who's a self-employed consultant. So he's filling out a schedule C to report his profit or loss from business. And these earnings are going to be subject to the self-employment taxes. So we've got John's full 1040 here. So we'll go through the schedule SE, schedule C, and all the other uh, forms and schedules that are required. And then we've also got just one slide here covering some background on the self-employment tax and then some details on the fact pattern. So the Schedule SC is generally going to be filed with your 1040 and it is used to calculate not only your self-employment earnings that are subject to tax but your self-employment taxes. And so when we talk about self-employment taxes and those rates, the combined rate is really two components. So there's a social security tax of 12.4% and then a Medicare tax of 2.9%. Now the social security tax, this is on your earnings up to 160,200. And now that cap is as of the 2023 tax year. This cap uh, adjusts basically every year for inflation. Uh, so if you're filing this for a different tax year, look up what the combined earnings cap is for that year to make sure you're not uh, over or undercharging yourself on the Social Security tax. The Medicare tax has no limit. So this is 2.9% on your combined earnings, all, all earnings that are subject to self-employment taxes. Now, the self-employment tax basically has kind of a default computation, but there are some optional methods that you can use, uh, and we'll talk about why you might want to use one of these optional methods, but generally they result in you having higher self-employment taxes paid. So if you have uh, a farming business or another non-farming business and your self-employed earnings are really low or negative. So what I mean is if you're looking at your Schedule C for your profit or loss from business, if you get down to here with your taxable uh, profit or loss from the business and this number is really, really low or negative, uh, often it's negative when you want to use this optional method, uh, you can you can elect to use one of these other methods to actually pay some taxes. So for farming, uh, the farming business, instead of using that net earnings, you would calculate your self-employment earnings using two-thirds of your gross farm income up to $6,560. If you're using the non-farm optional method, the non-farm business would calculate your self-employment earnings as the smaller of the 6560 or two-thirds of your gross income. So in other words, if you're looking back at your Schedule C, instead of calculating your self-employment earnings based on this number, you would look at the gross income figure up here on line seven, and you would take two-thirds of that number uh, or the, le the lesser of two-thirds of that number or the 6560. So obviously the question is, well, why would you ever want to do that? Why would you want to put yourself in a situation where you pay more in self-employment taxes? Well, there's a couple reasons. So the first one is an increase in Social Security coverage, right? So if you're self-employed, the more you pay in to Social Security, the more you can claim on uh, coming out when you retire. Right, so the more you pay in, the more you get, arguably, when you retire. Uh, so that's one reason why you might want to do this. The other one is you can increase your earned income for certain tax credits, like the earned income tax credit or the additional child tax credit. So either of those credits, those are really driven by your earned income. So if you have low or negative uh, self-employed income, then you, you can't claim them. Often you can't claim the credits, but if you opt to use one of these optional methods, then you might be able to get that. All right, so let's have a look at the fact pattern here. Uh, we have John Q. Taxpayer. He's self-employed, so he reports all of his income and expenses on Schedule C, and his net profit from that business is $60,750 for the year, which is going to be taxable self-employment income. Now, he has no other wages or other self-employment income flowing through from partnerships, right? So partnerships, if you're material participant in those uh, partnerships often your line one income is also going to be subject to self-employment tax so he doesn't have any of that now he does uh, have some investment income but the investment income isn't subject to self-employment tax uh, only your compensation is 
and so he also had some health insurance premiums because he's self-employed he has to cover his own health insurance and he paid 4800 for the year all right so let's have a look at his return and we'll start to get into some of these details so the first thing to do uh, is you want to calculate your uh, net income from profit or loss from the business so john's filled out his schedule c here he's got his income he's got his expenses and so the net profit or loss on line 31 is sixty thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars so he would enter that amount on schedule one line three and he carries this over to schedule se line two right so let's go to schedule se line two and start working through the self-employment tax form so uh, we don't have any exclusions up here right so we're not church employee and we're not making uh, any of these optional uh, elections right so we're not in a farming business uh, and he's not electing to use the non-farm optional method to calculate his self-employment earnings. He's going to stick with the 60750 coming from the Schedule C. So on line 2, we have net profit or loss from Schedule C, line 31, $60,750. Now in line 4A, we multiply that value by 92.35%. Right? So we've got our uh, 60,750 times 92.35% and we're left with $56,102 rounded up to 56,103. All right. Now again, we're not using uh, any of these optional methods so we can, can skip over those items there. Uh, so ultimately, the uh, amount that we're working with here on line 6, we add lines 4C, 5B, and we're left with $56,103. Now the maximum amount of combined wages and self-employment earnings for this year is that $160,200. So what the IRS has started doing is if you're working with the SC tax form, based on whatever year you're using, they will they will automatically include whatever the maximum is. So we haven't typed in this figure, right? That's just part of the form now. So 160,200 is the maximum. We're certainly well below that, right? We have $56,103 of earnings. Now, we don't have any W-2 wages reported. So if you had self-employment earnings and you also had a job as an employee, the amount of social security wages and withholding that you have would be reported here right so we would have 8a with total social security wages reported in boxes 3 uh, 7 on forms w2 we don't have any w2 right so if we look at john's 1040 here lines 1a through z for compensation as an employee right on on line 1a nothing right so he's not an employee anywhere he's only a self-employed person so lines 8a through c are blank and so we're left with line 9 we subtract line 8d right which is zero from the line 7 160,200 and so we're left with 160,200 dollars all right, so now we figure out, okay, how much tax, uh, so what is our wage base or compensation that's actually subject to tax? Well, line 10, it's the smaller of line 6 or line 9, right? So uh, so line 6 is 56,103, line 9 is 162,100. So we multiply the smaller of line 6 or 9 by 12.4%. So we take line 6, 56,103 times 12.4%, and we're left with $6,957. That's the amount of the Social Security tax. Then we multiply line 6 by 2.9%. 56,103 times 2.9 gives us $1,627. Add the two together, and this is our total SE tax, 8,584. Now this value is the total amount of tax that we have to pay uh, before accounting for any kind of deductible credit. So we have to enter this value on Schedule 2, Line 4. So if I go back to Schedule 2 here, Additional Taxes, Line 4, our self-employment tax from Schedule SE is $8,584. Now, because you're self-employed, you're paying both the employer and employee portion of these taxes, you are allowed a deduction for one half of that self-employment tax. So on line 13, 
we multiply line 12 by 50 percent we have four thousand two hundred and ninety two dollars and so we enter that value on schedule one line 15. so schedule one we have additional income and adjustments to income line 15 is on page two here in adjustments to income and you note here on line 15 we've got the deductible part of se tax four thousand two hundred and ninety two dollars now I'll cover uh, this very briefly. I've got other videos on self-employed health insurance, but when you are self-employed, you don't report your health insurance premiums as a self-employed person on Schedule C. So in other words, it doesn't go in here. And as we note here on line 15, interest other than health. So they don't want you to deduct health insurance here. You have to complete the 7206 form separately and use this to calculate how much self-employed health insurance you can actually deduct. Now John has enough earnings where he's going to be able to deduct the full amount, the 4800 so he does report that amount on Schedule 1 in Part 2 on Line 17. Alright, so now once all these totals are coming together, if we go to the Schedule C, we can see here on Line 8 we've got his net earnings from that Schedule C, $60,750. And then we have the net amount of all those adjustments uh, from uh, the self-employed uh, health insurance deduction. We have the uh, deduction for self-employed, the one half of the SC taxes. That's all reported on line 10 there. And then the actual self-employment tax is reported on line 23. So line 23 here other taxes including the SE tax from Schedule 2, Line 21, $8,584. All right, so that covers it for this tutorial. Hope that was helpful. Uh, any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. And uh, as always, appreciate you watching and look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thank you.